So now in this next video, we're going to continue our look at the pre-Darwinian ideas and conclude our actual look on those ideas, and we'll entitle this next flowchart Pre-Darwinian Ideas Roman Numeral 2. Okay, Pre-Darwinian Ideas Roman Numeral 2. And the key idea right now, and the whole idea behind this lecture, is to always look back at our definition of evolution. Descent with modification. When do we see it? Why do we see it? And who proposes it? In this next flowchart of the pre-Darwinian ideas, we will still not get to evolution, but what we're going to do is start hinting at it. And you'll see what I mean by that. So, let's begin. The first guy we want to look at is Mr. James Hutton. So we are now continuing our path, our timeline of what's happening before Darwin. Next on the timeline is James Hutton. He was a Scottish geologist, okay? So he was a Scottish geologist. Just want to throw that out there, make sure we understand who he was. Not just the name, but he was a person. So his basic idea was something very important. He developed something known as gradualism. All these theories are about to develop and getting closer and closer to the theory of evolution. Now, gradualism states the following. It states that landforms are, so we'll write this down, landforms, like rocks, mountains, valleys, landforms are results of mechanisms, mechanisms, currently currently operating what does that mean landforms are results of mechanisms currently operating this essentially means that everything that we see on earth today is due to things like erosion and due to things like volcanic activity and it's also due to things that are uh, also still happening today like flooding so this gives us a bit of a less religious-based component to what the idea previous that we saw. What was the previous idea? It was the theory of catastrophism, and that was proposed by Cuvier. Now what we're doing is we're saying that, yeah, catastrophism is, you know, plausible, but what we're saying is that those catastrophic, let's say, layers that he saw were all due to activities that are currently operating on earth that we still see today just extreme versions of them so this gradualism is sort of like it wasn't catastrophes let's say but it was gradual buildup of currently operating mechanisms like erosion volcanic activity and flooding all these things building up led to those layers let's say developing those rock layers and thus those different flora and fauna that Cuvier observed so now we're pushing away from the theology side and getting a little bit more to the, we would say, less natural theological side. So now continuing after James Hutton, we have a man that's very, very important in this entire pre-Darwinian idea, Mr. Charles Lyell. Okay, Charles Lyell very influential individual to Darwin himself. Charles Lyell was a geologist Okay, so he studied the earth. That was that's what a geologist does. He actually looked at a refined version of gradualism. He looked at the work of Hutton and he refined what we would say gradualism. He made it a little bit different, sort of fixed it up a little bit. And what did he say? In his refined version of gradualism, he developed something known as the doctrine of Uniformitarianism. Una. Oh, I gotta write this again. Uniform. Make sure I spell this right. Etarianism. Uniformitarianism. Crazy word. Long word. What does this mean? So let's see. This basic idea of the uniform uniformitarianism doctrine by Charles Lyell was the following. Geological processes, just like the ones that we've already mentioned, earth functions, earth mechanisms, these geological processes are uniform. They are uniform. This basically means that they balance each other out. They 
balance, we'll say, they balance out. Essentially, what we mean by this as an example to understand uniformitarianism is that the formation of mountains, okay, so that's one event, the formations of mountains, so that's one gradual event that we established in gradualism, is actually balanced out by its counterpart, the opposite, which is known as erosion. So the formation of mountains versus erosion, we could say, balances out. This is what we mean by balancing out. The amount of mountains that are made are, e are going to be equal and uniform to the amount of erosion, erosion that we see. So erosion is just the opposite of mountain formation. It's when you sort of start creating valleys of sorts. And these are mountains, which are the opposite of valleys. So we have this uniformitarianism doctrine developed by Charles Lyell. So again, we're getting more and more scientific. That's the basic idea right now. And finally, we're going to end this flowchart by looking at the work of a crucial individual, a man who's still very important to this day. Um, his name was Jean-Baptiste, Frenchman, de Lamarck. Okay? Sorry for my French accent. I just love saying his name. Great name. Jean-Baptiste de Lamarck. This man... Uh, was a crucial individual in the pre-Darwinian ideas because what he did was he studied fossils, okay, just like his predecessors, but, 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 he studied fossils, but he actually saw what we call, he saw lines of descent. Now, go back to our definition of evolution. Descent with modification. Are we getting closer and closer to it? Of course we are. We finally see the word descent. What we see here is that the, he saw lines of descent specifically from what we call, what we would consider older to younger species. So he saw a descent mechanism of old extinct species to the younger, more present species today. So he was truly, you could state, and this is the key idea to understand about Lamarck. Do not forget this. John Baptiste de Lamarck, L-A-M-A-R-C-K, was literally, you could say, because of this statement that I just gave you, the first, he was the absolute first to propose, to propose a mechanism, M-E-C-H for mechanism, for evolution. So this is a key, key idea. I'm going to box this in. Make sure you don't forget this. It was not Darwin who was first in terms of evolution. The first man to propose evolution, which was descent from an older to a younger species, was John Baptiste de Lamarck. And his idea was based off of something known as, and I'm going to do this over here, the principle, and it's very easy to understand, principle of use and what he called disuse. Okay? Either you use something or you don't. So what does this mean? So his idea of evolution was based off of the principle of use and disuse. He stated that the part of the body which are often used, let's say, part of body, any animal, which is often used does the following. Part of body which is often used becomes longer and stronger. Very easy to remember. It's so almost obvious to think that. You get a longer and stronger body part that's often used. Basically you get a better version of it because you're using it so much. What's the classic example that he uses? He thought that, and this is actually wrong, but it, it makes sense for right now. He thought that the giraffe neck showed this perfectly. EX, the giraffe neck. He thought that was exactly what this was all about. The giraffe neck is so much longer and stronger than everybody else because it's so often used to reach for leaves, which is actually not true, but we're going to get to that later. And he also stated that the parts that were not used, what do you think about these? These actually begin to deteriorate. They just sort of phase out. And this is a super, super close way, almost identical, but a little bit wrong, to the mechanism of evolution that we have today. So he was pretty close in terms of 
figuring this all out, what evolution is, but he wasn't exactly right. You can't say he was 100% accurate. You're going to see why when we talk about Darwin himself. And finally, the last thing we want to understand about Lamarck is that we have to understand not only the principle of use and disuse, but he used this principle and this idea to come up with something that's very, very important in his whole life called the inheritance. And you have to remember this name, what he called the inheritance of acquired characteristics. This is his words, not mine. He called it the inheritance of acquired characteristics. Okay, this is established in 1809. Keep that in mind because we're going to look at dates once we start looking at Darwin. In 1809, he stated the following. In the inheritance of acquired characteristics, an individual, meaning the animal at, at hand, the organism at hand, passes on, so there's the descent that we see, passes on what he called acquired, okay, acquired, meaning gained, okay, acquired characteristics, I'll just write C-H-A-R, from their lifetime, okay, from their lifetime to the next generation, to, I'll just say, next gen. Individual passes on acquired, that's the key word here, characteristics from their lifetime to the next generation. Biggest example that we always attribute to Lamarck is the giraffe. Think of the giraffe. The ancestor, he would state that the ancestor of giraffe, okay, you could already start thinking what he stated. The ancestor of giraffe had a longer short neck. What do you think? He stated that the ancestor of the giraffe actually had a short neck. And because the ancestor of the giraffe had a short neck, he stated that it acquired a long neck. And what principle would state that he acquired, that the giraffe acquired a long neck? Right underneath it, the principle of use and disuse. Part of body, part of body which is often used, gets longer and stronger. Acquired a longer neck. This longer neck went on to the next generations. I know we're getting a little sloppy and tight here, but stay with me goes to the next generations and thus today we see that giraffes have long necks. Giraffes long neck today. And that's it. That's what John Baptiste Lamarck came up with. Hutton was before him. Lyle was before him. And he was the first man to propose a theory, a mechanism for evolution. We are done with pre-Darwinian ideas. Understand his inheritance of acquired characteristic. This is very important and we're going to distinct this. We're going to differentiate this from what Darwin believed and how this is actually technically not correct.